Hi students, it's Lee Nelson from Hillcrest Community School. Today, I'm going to talk about the trade first subtraction method. But I feel like I'm kind of in the way here, so let me step aside so we can see this better. There, that's better. Trade first subtraction method. Now, in third grade, we've been talking a lot about math facts. Knowing our math facts is really important for things like this trade first subtraction method. As I look around our classroom, there's actually several examples that I can think of right away that would make for good subtraction problems that would use the trade first method. In fact, here's one right now. 234 minus 186. We could make a number story out of all kinds of things. The books on our bookshelves, the number of steps it took to get out to the creek, lots of things. But before we get into the subtraction part, let's talk about a few things. First of all, I have a poem for you. It says, if there's blank on the floor, go next door. If the numbers are blank blank, then zero's the game. If there's more on blank, there's no need to stop. Now this is a rhyme and a bit of a riddle too. Let's go through it one more time. This time we'll fill in some blanks. If there's more on the floor, go next door. If the numbers are the same, then zero's the game. If there's more on top, there's no need to stop. Now we'll come back to this rhyme in a little bit. Let me also talk about this word trade. The method is called trade first. Now in math, if you're going to trade something, you could do something like one nickel for five pennies. That would be an equal trade. Or if you're using money, you could also think of a dime for two nickels. That would also be an even trade. Trading can also happen when you take a ten and trade it for ten ones. That might look something like this. You could even take a hundred and trade it for ten tens. That might look something like this. You could even take the number 234 and trade it for two hundreds, three tens, and four ones. And some of you might be a little unsure about this, but you could even trade it for one hundred, twelve tens, and fourteen ones. If you don't believe me, we'll take a look at it later. Now, let's get back to our problem, 234 minus 186. You'll notice one thing that I've done already, and I've taken the numbers and put two different colors. We'll be seeing an example later on for why I did this. But something else I like to do when I'm doing a subtraction problem is to put lines between my place value columns. This way, I know for sure I'm subtracting the right numbers. Because everyone knows that I couldn't just start subtracting 8 minus 2, or 3 minus 1. We need to follow the place value columns, and we need to go in order. Now, in subtraction, if I'm taking 4, subtract 6, I don't have enough. I need to do some trading. Let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to take the 3 and cross it out. Now, I didn't just make the 3 disappear. I'm actually going to trade something. I'm going to use one of the 10s. There used to be 3 of them. Now there's just 2. I'm going to take that 10 and move it over to the ones. So having two tens and 14 ones is the same as having 34. I've just traded things around. Now I have enough to subtract 14 minus 6. It's 8. That's great, but now I need to subtract two tens, subtracting away eight tens from it. Two tens minus eight tens. I don't have enough. Looks like I need to do some more trading. I'm going to use one of those hundreds. I had two of them before, now I just have one. I didn't make it disappear, I simply traded it. I moved it over to the tens place. There used to be two tens, now there's twelve. Now I can, start, now I can subtract twelve minus eight. It's four. One minus one, nothing, need, nothing to do there, that's zero. So, let's go back to my rhyme. If there's more on the floor, go next door. If the numbers are the same, then zero's the game. If there's more on top, there's no need to stop. Here's why we say the rhyme. Let's look at this example of 45 minus 28. When we try to subtract 5 minus 8, there's more on the floor. This number below the 5 is on the floor. And it's more than 5. So we need to go next door to do some trading. Here we traded away a 10 from the 4 so that there were three left, and that's how we got 15. We used 10 to bring over, and so instead of just five, now we have 15. 
So if there's more on the floor, go next door. But be careful, don't get it carried away with trading numbers because you don't always need to. So the second part of the rhyme says, if there's more on top, no need to stop. In this situation, we have 37 minus 14. Seven is the number on top, and there's more on top. So there's no need to stop. We don't need to do any trading in this situation. The same happens over here. We have three tens minus one, and we can just do a three minus one to get two. The third part of the rhyme says, if the numbers are the same, then zero's the game. Anytime you have two numbers that are the same on top of each other and below each other, zero's the game. So three minus three is zero, seven minus two, there's more on top, no need to stop. The answer is five. Now, that's the trade for subtraction method, but let's go back to a couple things we mentioned earlier. First of all, we said that you could take 234 and trade it for two hundreds, three tens, and four ones. Most of you agreed right away with that. But I'm guessing when I said 112 tens and 14 ones, you had a little hard time seeing it. So let's take a look at what this example looks like again. We had 112 tens, 14 ones, 100, 12, 10, 14 ones traded out for this number. But let's take one more close look at how that happens. I'm going to use this site right here. This is a site that we'll introduce from our classroom website in class tomorrow. This in blue, remember the blue number was on top, is the number 234. Below it, getting subtracted, is the number 186. As we begin this problem, we can see that we don't have enough ones to take six away. So here's where we do our trading. If there's more on the floor, we need to go next door. I'm going to use one of these tens and turn it into ten ones. I don't have three tens anymore, I have two. How did we get fourteen ones? We used ten from over here, and now we have fourteen. Now I could subtract away the 6, and I'd be left with 8. So far, so good, but here's our 10s, two of them, and we need to take 8 of them away. Again, it's time to trade. There's more on the floor. Time to go next door. There we have it. 100 was taken away, so we used to have 2, now we just have 1. They join the tens. All ten tens join the two that were already there. Now we have twelve tens to take away eight of them. I'll try to do some fast clicking to take away those eight tens. Most of you would have already known that twelve minus eight was going to equal four. You probably got that before I could click them away. There's my four tens. Now I've just got one hundred to take away, and there's my answer. Two hundred thirty-four minus one hundred eighty-six. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson on trade first subtraction. If you need to watch parts again, feel free to do so, and happy subtracting.